everybody, Pastor Chris Solak here. We are talking about John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8 this week. We're wrapping things up. Man, I love this passage of Scripture because it solidifies the intimacy, I know, for our ministry that we preach here at Immersion Church and Faith-Based Ministries. It is, it is about intimacy. We preach this nonstop. And when, and when we talk about process of intimacy, it must be by belief, faith, and obedience. Those are the building blocks to, to intimacy with Jesus. But if you don't believe, you can't enter into the celestial gift of faith. And if you don't have faith, it's going to be really hard to access the Lord, hear his voice. And once you hear his voice, then you have a responsibility to obey what he asks you to do. This is the process of, of submission and relationship, understanding that God is good. And this is, I think, one of the things that we, we struggle with is that there's some of us that really don't know the nature of God and we're, we're not sure if he's really good or not. We hope that he's good, but there's such an absence of relationship based on the way we've been trained, based on the way we've accepted God. Uh, we've had people share with us how, you know, who God is and how, what he's really like and what he'll do. And, and people have very differing opinions on this. And, and you have to be very careful. I'm going to be honest. As I have taken great steps of intimacy with the Lord over the last few years, it, he, he, he often will say things and do things that will tear apart constructs that have been programmed by things that people have said that I've accepted. And it's, it's so important to allow that to happen. So often people refuse it. They're like, oh, no, 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 no. This is not what I believe. And no, you have to go, no, but this is, I can't get to know the Lord better until I allow him to remove this and take me into a place with less restraint. Jesus is always trying to produce freedom in relationship in our lives. And that, that I can tell you, speaking to the scripture, that, that he who is free is free indeed, but there's levels of freedom that God will lead us to that simply scare us, and he will give us purposes that simply scare us. And to understand that he does that, and he does that on purpose, that we would require to access more of our own faith that has been portioned unto us, and that we would have greater need for him every day of our lives. His visions don't shrink. They expand. It says here in John chapter 15 that he, anybody who produces fruit with Jesus produces much fruit. Not just a little fruit, much fruit. And so to understand for, the, for those who produce much fruit, much is expected. So if you would, verse 6 uh, here, If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch and he withers. They gather the branch and uh, they gather the branch uh, throw them into the fire, and they are burnt. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. Interesting, right, that you have to prove yourself in order to be a disciple. That it is not by words, that it is by action. It is by obedience. It is by diligence by what God asks you to do, that you prove your ability to follow. And that's, that is uh, so paramount. Of course, Luke 9 says, you know, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and Jesus says, follow me. And of course, he, he finishes that up in, in, in the latter verses of, of Luke 9, saying that some of you who do this, you will walk and enter the kingdom of God before you taste death. So it's important for us to understand how uh, celestial this understanding is and that we would follow it and we would follow it blindly we don't walk by say, sight we walk by faith and we have to do that blindly why because then we cling to jesus we cling to him because we trust him we know how much he loves us what he's already done for us and in an action of love and trust in return we hold on to him and he corrects our paths this shouldn't be, this is so foundational to, very, to our very uh, basic actions of faith. I just, I just want to come back and, and get into verse 7. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. There is uh, a philosophy that permeates the church and it is partially correct and partially incorrect. And I want to speak to this because Jesus is speaking to it right here. Is, is it, we talk about naming it and claiming it. And it, it often it gets, 
uh, disparaged because of the prosperity gospel. And it is used as a principle of the prosperity gospel, but it is a principle in which you prosper through. But I've, I've had this active debate, even in my own family, I've had this active debate around the lunch table uh, to understand, to understand how, how this works. Yes, you have the ability to name and claim things. You do. But it must function under the sanctified will of God. You cannot be outside of the will of God and be naming and claiming things. Just so you know. And a lot of times, there's a lot of messages that say that you can do this. No, this is an action within, with your in sync with the presence of God. That you're moving in agreement in the will. And that God is going, okay, now claim that. Name that. Claim that. Name that. What's the difference? One is coming out of your flesh or coming out of your, your desires apart from God, and the other is actually the sanctified word of God telling you to name and claim something. I'm going to take you right back to uh, verse 5 here, chapter 15. Jesus saying, I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. The fact that people think that they can name and claim outside of the sanctified word and will of God is absolute ridiculousness. It's foolishness. It's foolishness. Again, you're trying to steal. You're trying to steal from God. You're, you are trying to manipulate the words of God against himself and his goodness. It's the same thing with the seven sons of Sceva. Trying to use the authority to do acts to, create, to gain notoriety for themselves right? When they didn't carry the anointing, they just simply used the name. They were naming and claiming. And then they ran into something that no longer recognized them as an authority. They recognized Jesus, recognized Paul's authority, but didn't recognize their authority. Stripped them naked and beat their tuchus and drove them out. You will get eaten up, chewed up, and spit out. What do we, where do we get that term from? Revelation, the lukewarm. Those who are somewhere in the middle that are neither hot nor cold. To understand that we must function under the sanctified word of God. Naming it and claiming it is part, based on the word of God here in John chapter 15 and the words of Jesus, is a principle to the kingdom. It is, a, it is an authoritative act that is, that is part of the divinity of Christ. It is part of the anointing. But it cannot take place. It has no place unless God tells you to do it and you're acting in his will, acting in obedience, and exercising that. Why? Because apart from Jesus, you can produce nothing. Verse 8, my father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. Here's the whole purpose for everything that we do, is to bring glory to the father through the son. Why? Because it is his process. We have submitted ourselves to his process as a demonstration of love. I want to speak this this morning that obedience is greater than sacrifice. I'm going to say it again. Obedience is greater than sacrifice. Everything is to glorify the Father through the Son to give that glory, to hand that glory back to the Father. The glory that He was always, that, he's, that has been stolen from Him, that has been taken from Him, that was always His to begin with. And you and I, you and I get to enter into that process. We have the knowledge. We're aware. Hallelujah. But if we're aware, then we're responsible to follow the word of God, to be a part of what Jesus says, and to produce much fruit for him, not to produce nothing for ourselves. I hope this has blessed you all. You have a great week. Until next time, be blessed.